Hi there! Today, we'll be doing an introduction to RapidMiner Studio and teaching you how to use classification. So, why RapidMiner? RapidMiner is a robust all-in-one package that allows you to go from data preparation to model building, model training, and deployment. It is able to achieve all this in a graphical user interface without coding, but it's extensible with R and Java programming for advanced users. It is also easy to install with a bundle installer and it's available on Windows, OS X, and Linux. Finally, RapidMiner is free. There are some advanced functionality available in the paid enterprise version, but most of us won't be needing those. You can download RapidMiner Studio by clicking the link in the video description below. In part 1, we'll be walking you through the RapidMiner interface and how the elements fit together. In part 2, we'll be teaching you how to use RapidMiner to do classification, and we'll be using the decision tree and naive Bayesian algorithm. Let's get started. Fire up RapidMiner from the Applications folder or Start screen if you're on Windows. Once it's loaded, click on New Process. You see that the app area is divided into several views, such as Operators, Process, and Parameters. Let's open a sample process to see how it all works. Click on File, Open Process. Samples, Processes, 01 Learner, and 01 Decision Tree. Press OK. Now, think of a rapid minor process as a factory. The raw materials go in, go through a number of processing stages, and come out as a finished product. These blocks here are known as operators, and each of these is like a stage of processing in the factory. Each operator has inputs and outputs. Here, you can see the retrieve operator sending its output to the decision tree input, and the decision tree input becomes the output here, which goes to the results. So how does the retrieve operator know which data set to get? So when you click on the Retrieve Operator, you will notice in the parameters over here that you can configure options for operators. In this case, the data set being used. This is using a sample data set Golf included with RapidMiner. The Decision Tree Operator has its own set of options that you can tweak. Now, let's run the process and take a look at the results. Click on the play button over here. Here, you can see the decision tree predictive model built by RapidMiner based on the training data set. Notice that we're now on the results data pane. Click on design to go back. Anytime you make changes to the process, you will need to run it before you can see the new results. Now let's say you want to use a naive Bayesian model instead of decision tree. You can disconnect operators by right-clicking on the link and clicking remove connection. You can delete operators by selecting it and pressing the delete key. If you are on a MacBook, you don't have a delete key, so you have to hold function and backspace. I can now go to the Operators view here and search for Bayes. I can then click and drag it to the Process view over here. To connect the Operators, I click on the Output port here and connect it to the Input port here. And again, from here to over here. Now that you know how to operate RapidMiner, let's go into using Decision Tree for classification. To begin part 2, 
click in the description below to download the German credit dataset. After downloading the file, unzip it. In this dataset, the details of each bank loan is known along with whether it ended up being good or bad credit. The goal is to create a classification model to predict whether future applicants will have good or bad credit based on their loan details. So open up a new rapid miner process and we want to read the Excel file that we just downloaded. So search for Excel and go into import configuration. Look for the folder that you just downloaded and unzipped and get the German credit raw Excel file. Click next until you are at step four of four and go to the last column, credit rating, and change from attribute to label because you want to tell Rapid Miner that this is what you are predicting. And the others are just factors that contribute towards it. Now you want to see that the values here are not that descriptive, but we'll fix that in a moment. Click finish. Then you pull out a read CSV file. Again, import from the same folder, you want to get the German credit value modification.csv, click next, choose comma separation, click next, and you see that this uh, column for the new value, this is the more descriptive label, and this is the old value, the less descriptive label, and we want to eventually replace all the old values with the new values. So click next and finish. Okay, so how do we actually replace the values? We use the operator called dictionary. So replace dictionary, connect them up like this. And you can click on replace dictionary, go in parameters and choose replace from old value to new value. If you hook it up and run it, you can see that the values have been replaced. But now we want to focus on the credit rating column. So 1 stands for good credit and 2 stands for bad credit. And we want to make this labeling a bit more clear. So we go back to design. And we look for the numerical to binomial operator. And we hook it up, set this special attributes thing because we are working with the label, choose single here, and credit rating. So we want to set the minimum to 2 and the maximum to 2 because the range here, anything that falls in the range here will be considered by rapid minor as false. So one pass through this will be true and two pass through this will be false. And to make this even clearer, we do a rename. So we drop a rename operator here. Connect it up. So the old name we can choose credit rating. And a new name, we can say credit rating equals good. And then we can run it. So now you see that the column label up here has changed. So credit rating equals good. And it's true or false. So this is good credit, this is bad credit. Uh, remember it used to be 1 and 2 here. And now it's been uh, changed because of the numerical to binomial operator. Let's go back to design. And what we want to do now is to do the classification proper. Remember that classification has two phases, which is the training and the testing phase. So we can do that using the split validation operator here. So you connect it up like this connect the mod 
and the f here. So this split validation operator is a bit special because it is a nested operator, meaning that you can double click it to actually go inside it. And you can see that it has been split into the training and testing uh, boxes. So you want to do a decision tree uh, algorithm. So you search for decision tree, drag it in, and then you hook it up like so. And we want to configure this decision tree to use the Gini index, just for this example. And for testing, we want to use a apply model here. So connect it up. So here you are passing the model as well as the uh, data. And then you want to look for a performance operator. So this thing will actually give you the uh, confusion matrix. Yep, that's about it. You can click process to go back up one level. And over here, when you click the validation, you can actually choose the split ratio. So 0 0.7 means 70% of the data will be used for training and 30% used for testing. So maybe let's change that to 0 0.9. So 90% training and 10% testing. And you can choose the type of sampling that you want. For this, we'll choose stratified sampling, which means that uh, there's an equal distribution of class values between the training and testing set. And now you can just run it. So you can see that there are a few tabs here. The this tab comes from the performance operator and this one comes from the decision tree operator. So this is the confusion matrix. You can actually look at the accuracy, the precision, the recall of uh, this uh, classification operation that we just performed. And now we look at the decision tree over here. And you can see uh, more or less what factors contribute to a good and bad credit rating. So for example, you can look at the flow of the decision tree. If a person has checking account status equals to A13, property equals to unknown or no property, credit amount that is more than 1324, this person is going to be classified as true, which means good credit. And this is how you read the decision tree. Now we can save this by going to File, Save Process. And you can see that RapidMiner tries to save your data in a repository. So what a repository is, is a kind of logical structure where you can save your files in. It's just to make the uh, transfer of data and processes a bit easier because you can just group them together and uh, maybe copy them somewhere instead of uh, having things all over the place. So you can just type something in. Usually you can have a process here and can type decision tree, OK, and it's saved. So Rapid Miner can also do other classification algorithms such as naive Bayesian. So now we'll look at an example data set, the golf one, to predict whether to go golfing based on the weather conditions. So once you're in the new process, go under the repositories view, under samples, data, drag out the golf 
and the golf test set. Search for naive bias operator and apply model. So what you want to do is the training set connect to the naive Bayesian model operator and the testing one connect it like that this one goes over here so the question is which port should connect to which port you'll see that the labels here are similar so you are passing the model into this and the output from here into the unlabeled port and later on it will come out as a label because it has been processed and now we also want to have a performance operator just like earlier and we connect it up this will give us the confusion matrix and we also want to connect the model here so that we can see what the model looks like. Let's run it and go to charts. So if you just look at for example humidity, you can see that this is a probability density graph and after the intersection occurs here you can see that the probability of no becomes much higher. You can also look at the distribution table and we can see that when the wind equals to true, the probability of not playing 0 0.589 is much higher than yes 0 0.333. Now we can also look at the confusion matrix here again accuracy, precision and recall the percentages and the values over here. And that's all for using classification with RapidMiner. After watching this video, you'll have learned the basics of RapidMiner and how to use decision trees and naive Bayesian operators for classification. We hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.